I would I would put him uh, someone. He's sort of the kind of writer that what's his name um, Philip K. Dick is, and you know how I deconstruct Dick in my science fiction novel. Um, Dick was a guy who had uh, interesting ideas. He had no ability actually to structure characters and and to uh, make plots or narratives of any depth. And Samuel Beckett is that way too. His plays are interesting ideationally. The, uh, they're interesting uh, theoretically. But the actual way that he renders them, there's nothing really of depth. I mean, he's better than Bertolt Brecht. I don't know if you've ever read any of Brecht's shit. Um, Brecht, have you? Yes, it's garbage. Yeah, it, 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 I mean... The dark was, uh, was influenced by his shit. Yeah, and 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 so you have you have these people who, I mean, Brecht stuff is just a, a bunch of political posturing. There's no character development. There's nothing there of any depth. I mean, I, I I'll go with someone like Clifford Odets and Waiting for Lefty, his, one of his most famous plays, or even Rocket to the Moon, a, a play that's not thought of as a uh, one of his top stuff. And uh, I've always I been. I think that's probably his best play. Yeah. And o o Odette's is someone who's not held in the regard of Beckett, but he has a much better playwright than Beckett. You know, Sam Shepard, who recently died. Sam Shepard uh, was a very good playwright. I've got about 15 of his plays in uh, books of mine. I've read a few others online, so I probably read about 18 or 20 of his plays. I don't know if Odette's had the highs of Miller, but he, I think, was more consistent than Miller. Miller had a lot of lows. Yeah, but he does, the thing, though, is he doesn't have anything up there with Glass Menagerie, no, no, Glass Menagerie is Williams, with uh, Death of a Salesman. Or, or, yeah. Miller. Yeah, yeah. D uh, Death of a Salesman and All My Sons by Miller, though, are probably better than anything Odette's did. But, yeah, Odette's doesn't have some of the latest stuff. And, you know, the Tennessee Williams, you mentioned uh, some of his later experimental shit, which shows that he didn't really understand... Uh, it shows, too, that a lot of the, the collective works that you have of these writers. They're not necessarily representational of their corpus. Uh, I bought a Library of America book from Tennessee Williams that is supposed to be the complete library of Tennessee Williams. It doesn't have his latest stuff, so I found out about plays that I had not read of his uh, that uh, when I looked up clips of them, uh, seemed to be a, 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 a far move away from sort of the poetic realism that he created in the, in the 50s and, uh, and 40s. Yeah, I mean, uh, his last 15, 20 he, years... He, I heard that he was influenced by Beckett at that time, by, in the 80s. So yeah, I, I guess, supposedly, but I mean, you know, uh, Beckett, like I said, and like you reiterated, I mean, he has import historically, uh, creatively. Is he any one of any great stature? No, I don't think anyone in 500 years is going to be claiming that Beckett... I hope they're not going to be claiming that Beckett was a great writer. Just as I, I'm pretty sure that the Thomas Pynchons and the David Foster Wallaces will become jokes where people in 2250 are going, oh, those wacky uh, turn-of-the-millennial people. What, what the fuck is wrong with them? There's a guy named Maseem on the E-list um, who I think is a very good photographer. Um, and he has, uh, he, I remember I sent him a bunch of Moho's photos. Moho is a, a young man on the E list. Um, and got him to get some feedback. And I thought some of the photos that Lassine gave him as examples of good photography were indeed good, but they weren't necessarily all photos. Some of them were just about a fork. Um, and basically, the showing shadow, it sort of reminds me of that galley painting with uh, just a bread on the table. It doesn't compare it to, say, the crucifixion of Christ, or uh, or his, his memory uh, painting with the, the clocks, you know. Um, uh, but I, I was thinking of this when you mentioned the environment. We, human beings, until we start seeing new things out there and start navigating the stars, probably will always be a slave to character in some way. Even in poetry, where you can extricate character, there's always a voice that sort of guides it, and you have to kind of differentiate. Um, different voices that you have so that you don't get them too similar. Um, but Vivian Meyer, at least at this point, I would consider probably, at least among the greatest photographers I've seen. And I think that she's better than someone more famous like Ansel Adams. She was more diverse, and she had a real knack and eye for character. 
Um, she would get little things that people don't even look for. And then she had a great diverse palette, too, where the color photos, they look almost like paintings, but the, the black and white photos, they're far more nostalgic and ecstatic at the end. Well, I don't, I don't think you can, can compare my with Ansel Adams since he did mostly nature photography. Ansel Adams pushed nature photography way beyond what was going on in the 20s and 30s. I mean, he's not only an important photographer, but a great photographer. And I don't, other than maybe a handful of photos he may have had in shows, I don't think he really ever did a lot of uh, portrait photography. So it's like comparing, you know, uh, Beethoven with, uh, you know, the with Charlie Bird Parker or something. They're totally different genres. And yeah, you could say that classical music is greater than jazz, perhaps, but I, I don't... I, I, a more apt comparison would be Diane Arbus. Uh, Diane Arbus's photos of fucked up people, or Dorothea Lang, who did the famous photo of the woman in the Depression with the two or three kids around her, the woman leaning her, her chin on, on her uh, fist. Uh, Lang and Arbus, I think, are more able to be comparable or or whatnot to Vivian Meyer because. That's, that's a good point. I recall those uh, photographers being mentioned in uh, in the documentary Fine Art Photography and Fine Art Photography. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I think that might be the case with Diane his films were always superior to his inspirations. He might not have realized it when he compares it to the searcher shop to the taxi driver, mm -hmm. but they were vastly superior in terms of, of their composition. That sort of reminded me of Vivian Meyer. Her influences, if she even had these, they were sort of speaking about her retroactively. Um, the, the manner in which she took from them and added more on to them, I think, was, was far more complex than people well yeah and uh, yeah I would agree and Vivian Maya again is one of these people that it's very frustrating because you know like I said if she was alive right now and 90 years old she'd just be a kooky old lady who is sending around her personal photographs and and probably most of the people who were in those documentaries uh, or there's a documentary called the mystery of Vivian Maya that I, I'm gonna probably try to do a show in another early next year again try to get Maloof and some other people uh, to talk about it, uh, they would not have any interest. I'm, I'm absolutely certain that they would not have any interest. It's it's driven by a historian. Uh, when I was talking with Amanda Reyes and her husband, I, I was mentioning Henry Darger. And it's really frustrating, uh, you know, uh, because Darger has this story where his work was found after his death. He was sort of hermetic. He was lonely and whatnot. And so was Vivian Meyer. Um, but Vivian Meyer was a great photographer. Henry Darger was just a crazy old guy who didn't know what the fuck he was doing. Uh, it reminds me of when people look at someone like Chris McCandless, you know, the guy, the yeah. kid who went to uh, Chris right. McCandless or Timothy Treadwell from Alaska, the guy who got eaten by the bear that, that Herzog uh, uh, did that documentary. A college kid at my, uh, at my campus once told me that, uh, uh, Alexander Supertramp was the, was the royal of his day. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, and then you look at someone like, I, I, I wrote a piece that's one of the more interesting things. It's only a short piece on Dick Prennicky, which is still one of my most popular. It's gotten, I don't know now, 60, 80 million views over 15 years or whatnot. But uh, Dick Prennicky was an interesting guy who should have been an Alaskan legend and, and isn't to a, a certain degree. But McCandless and Treadwell were idiots. And uh, Henry Dodger was an idiot. And you have to be, a, and I was telling this to Amanda, you have to be able to sort through the shit. You just can't say, and I, I was explaining how uh, emotion, you know, you can like something, as I've said many times, but if something just tickles your emotions, it's not going to do it the second time. The third and fourth time, you're going to get tickled less with your emotions. But if something hits your mind, that will be like, you know, someone taking a hammer and, and and hanging the thing that rings the bell at the top of, of I, the thing. I don't. I agree with you on a personal level, but I disagree with you in the sense that I don't think most people operate that way. Well, I think that I've used this analogy before. I think you know some minds are like puddles, some are like lakes, and some are like oceans. Uh, the, the 
certain things will affect that puddle a lot more than, than an ocean of your mind. Uh, I think that people could watch an episode of Pokemon over and over nowadays and get the same amount of emotional validity that it, that it has. Um, and I think that people are becoming more and more into that. The, the, the youth culture is sort of uh, becoming more evident in that childhood is extending not just into their into their teen years, but into their 20s, and then soon it will probably be into their 30s. And this is why they get such a, a juvenile culture. Well, I, I, do, I do agree about the pluralization of culture, but I do think people also that get their brains tingled uh, will come back to something. The problem is they don't recognize that tingling when it happens, and the rest of culture says, no, 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 it, only your feelings matter. So I think it's a cultural thing. And I think underneath, you know, because, I mean, <laughs> uh, Keith, who I mentioned, uh, a lot of a lot of these people that ask me to to read this book or something, people who contact me uh, on the website will say, you know, when I first read Cosmoetic or, or I, I watched this video that you did on whatever it might have been, I thought, man, you're an arrogant asshole. But then a week lit went by, a couple of weeks went by, and I watched the video, I read the piece again. And then a month later, I read it again. And I kept coming back to it. And this is something that has happened hundreds of times. People have said that they had a negative emotional reaction, but, there was, but they kept coming back. Well, why is that? That's because there was an intellectual spark that got to them, even subliminally, that they had no understanding about and no recognition of at the time. And even when they, they tell me that they come back, they don't know why they're drawn to want to wanna contact me. And I'll say, that's basically the reason why, is that I'm talking, uh, whether it's an essay or, or a video that I made or, or uh, a work, a poem or something, it's because I got, a, I got a little bit of that Velcro hook of the intellect of yours. Something stuck. And that thing that stuck is now bigger than the emotional reaction negatively that you had to the fact that I talked about something in realistic terms. And so I, I do absolutely disagree is that even the biggest motherfucking idiot can intellectually be reached to a certain degree, not the way maybe you can or Jessica can or Amanda Reyes, who I was talking to, or her husband, who has seemed to be very intelligent people themselves, but something sticks and people don't understand why. And I think hopefully society will get to a point where we get so sick and tired of this identity art and multiculturalism that we'll say, fuck it, let's just deal with reality. And, and I it, think that they have to have the capacity, though, to actually have that be meaningful for a, sort of a Relkian change. I recall the first time I saw... Then, they're I, not going to have the Relkian change. They're not going to have the Relkian change. I uh, Siamese Reflection and got a lot of ideas and sort of had a proverbial big bang. Yeah. But I think that that... That rarely happens with most people. I think they may have that. They may say, "Oh, yes, this this person is of merit," but they rarely do anything to improve their lives, or only to a small degree. I remember us talking off camera once, where you saying one of the problems you have with a lot of people contacting you, associate with, is that they have only a vague interest in the arts. They don't yeah. take everything that they are as a person and push into it. Um, and that is one of the frustrating things, especially if they have a capacity for for. Uh, for intellect, let alone talent. Yeah. Well, I no, I'm not saying that these people are going to be. Uh, most of these kids that write are not going to have that real can change your life. You must change your life moment. But uh, they may slowly accrete things and get better. Uh, some people, this kid Malik, who is on my e list, uh, he seems to have dropped out. His his email isn't working anymore. Now I don't know. Maybe he got too much negative feedback on some poems or some writing from Mohol or you or some other person on there. Uh, but it doesn't matter because uh, it, if, if that's the way, if that's why he he doesn't want to participate anymore, that's just, that's just the way it is. I mean, you can't you can't make someone uh, understand something that, you, that they should understand. You can't make them understand why this isn't intellectual junk food. Uh, they either will or not. But you can hopefully get enough vitamins into them to maybe have them open up a little bit. It's not going to be. It's not going to be Rilke. It's not going to be the Panther going behind the bars. It's not going to be Big Frank at the end of a Norwegian in the family suddenly breaking character and 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 he's some kind of an actor in some metaphysical 
drama within that. Uh, it is going to be in slow little things. And hopefully, as society comes back around to saying, oh, it's not just about your feelings. Your brain, your mind is as and actually more important than your emotions and feelings. As that happens, people will actually feel better about themselves because having your mind stimulated, you can say, oh, I watched this Bergman film. I watched uh, Shame, whether it's the Bergman film or the McQueen film, and I understand something more. And now I feel better than just you're telling me that, oh, I look good in this photo. It's going to be a slow process because things have been so ground down. So I mean, the, the, the wheel has been rubbed to the nub. Sparks are flying as the wheel is going uh, against concrete. But I, I, I do think it's not irrecoverable. I think things, history clearly shows we go in cycles and things will get better. It may not get better by the end of my life. Shut the door, for, I guess. Um, it may not get better by the end of my life, but uh, it, it will eventually.